Hi guys, welcome to Web Design Tuts. My name is Ian Yates, and today we're going to have a look at some of the options available to us when we're building tooltips with CSS. If you've been following this series, you'll be familiar with this admin bar. This is what we've been building. If you haven't been following the series, it's not a problem because this works as a kind of standalone tutorial. Uh, what we're going to cover is going to be useful in all kinds of situations. Uh, so this is what we're actually looking at. It's this little tooltip here. Uh, and that's what we're going to be trying to build in CSS. Now, when I was designing this, uh, I did intend to implement it using JavaScript, uh, but I've since changed my mind uh, and since decided that we're only going to be using CSS and HTML. And for that reason, uh, it can't look exactly like this because it's not possible uh, to position a single element against its parent like this uh, in a centered way if we don't know its exact width. Uh, so, as I said, we're going to be slightly altering the way it looks, but not, not a great deal. Um, but you'll see how that happens as we go along. So we'll get rid of uh, that and we'll open up what we have so far in our uh, encoder or in whatever code editor you're using. Uh, these are the list items with their anchors that we're going to be targeting. These are our buttons. And if I bring it up in Chrome, I'll just remind you which those are. There we go, those two there, and this one here on the right. These are the buttons which are going to have a tooltip applied to them. So the first thing we're going to do is add a bit of markup. This is going to be our first approach. Uh, so we're going to add a span to each one of these anchors. Uh, the first one, settings, we'll call the second one links. And our third one, which is all the way down here, uh, we're going to have open in a new window. A slightly longer tooltip just for illustrative purposes. So we'll save that, bring it back in our browser and refresh. And you can see that that's had a wonderful effect on our uh, on our admin bar so far. And it's basically just added these spans within our buttons. And it's inherited the web symbols typeface and uh, that's going to need some sorting out. So let's jump into our CSS and right down at the bottom I'm going to start adding some styles for our tooltips. So we need to target these fellas uh, and we'll do so uh, like so. This is the the span within the anchor within each list item uh, which has a class of icon. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is change the uh, change that font situation because that was a bit of a nightmare. So I'll we'll just copy and paste those three rules in there. That just changes our font family, the size and the weight back to something a little bit more presentable. So I'll refresh that. And you can see they've taken on that small uh, aerial font there. OK. And now we're going to start positioning them so that they don't affect the, the dimensions of our, uh, oops, of our buttons there. That's going to be positioned absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to position them left. 50% of the width of the parent, so that's going to shove it so that it starts in the center of the parent. Uh, and I'm going to just knock that down 35 pixels, like so. Now we're going to give it a background of black, simple as that, uh, a color so that it's uh, nicely visible, take my word for that, and uh, some padding, of course, nothing on top and bottom, left and right. A little bit and I'm going to give it a line height of 24 pixels and a corresponding height of 24 pixels which will vertically center the text uh, within it. So that should have made a significant difference already. Uh, that's I don't know why that's happening. We okay so for kickoff we have all of these things visible from the from the word go. They're only going to be visible when we hover over the parent, of course, but for the time being, that's fine. Uh, it's taken on the width of its parent as well. Uh, and for that reason, it has uh, included a line break in here, which is why some of the text is disappearing. So I'm just going to come back here and I'm going to put a little white space rule of no wrap. There we go. should bring that back and that will hopefully have improved that situation there. Okay, so there's the entirety of our tooltip. Perfect. Um, now what I'd like to do is add, using its before pseudo element, a little point 
just on its top left corner there just to further accentuate exactly which button the tooltip belongs to uh, so let's have a look here I'm going to need pretty much the same selector there but then of course I'll be pointing at it before pseudo element uh, now you notice I'm using double um, colon there and uh, the that's the CSS3 syntax for pseudo elements uh, the CSS2 syntax you might be familiar with as being just one colon uh, but these days we use the two in order to differentiate pseudo elements from pseudo selectors such as last child and first child and that sort of thing uh, so uh, let's see we'll give this a content of nothing just to get the ball rolling um, we're going to need to display that as block it's not going to have any um, any uh, dimensions as such but we're going to give it a border on the left Oops, excuse me border left uh, of six pixels that's going to be solid and it's going to be black like so and the border on the top border top is going to be very similar six pixels again solid uh, but this one's going to be transparent so that's basically going to chamfer off that top corner to give us a sort of point. Uh, now I just need to position it uh, absolutely once again, absolutely to the tooltip span, if you remember, uh, and that's going to be top uh, shoved up six pixels so that it sits on top and left uh, zero. So it's going to be on the top left of our tooltip. Refresh the page, and you'll see that that's a nice little pointer there just to clarify what's going on and again not a single image in sight which is always nice uh, okay just to get these things working we need to get them to disappear and only reappear on the on the hover state of course so for a kickoff we'll add a little hover state in here like so that's going to be the span appearing on the anchors hover state and what I'm going to do is reassert its position I only need to change its bottom position so to speak that's going to return to what we've just defined there and for the time being in its default state I'll shove it up 200 pixels so that it's way off the screen uh, so now you'll see that ordinarily it's way up here somewhere and upon hovering over the anchor uh, that returns to its normal place now we can pretty that up a little bit because it's a little bit stark we can get it to fade fade in we can use a transition so I'm going to uh, grab some transitions uh, and apply those to the span so in order to the bottom of the span and we'll apply some transitions here with the various uh, browser prefixes uh, you'll notice that the property we're transitioning is opacity and we haven't even played with any opacity yet uh, and we're going to add some opacity now we'll make it transparent to begin with and the reason we don't want to transition its position is because it would then drift in from the top of the screen and that would look a bit weird and it could affect the hover states as well it could affect where your mouse is hovering and that sort of thing so let's change the opacity just here above here so it's a default state we have an opacity of zero uh, and this is the Internet Explorer filter equivalent uh, so then on the hover we need to uh, make it perfectly visible by giving it an opacity of 1 and we'll set that to 100 there for the IE filter uh, so that's just going to transition its opacity uh, and bring it in just a bit more subtle and that's a nice sort of fade in when we hover over there okay that works perfectly well uh, but the quick tip doesn't end here so it's not that quick probably uh, but anyway what we're going to do now is improve things by cleaning up our markup because it's always nice to remove markup uh, when we don't need it uh, and in this case we're going to use uh, an attribute to hold our tooltip value and we're going to use that instead so what I'm going to do is get rid of that span and I'm going to add a title uh, attribute and that's what's going to hold our tooltip text so I'll get rid of these other two spans and stick a title in there and this one 
and there's a sticker title in there as well okay so I'll save that and then if I bring back Chrome and reset it uh, you'll notice that we've completely lost our tooltip uh, now obviously I've removed the span that was appearing and disappearing so now we need to uh, use something else in order to hold those values uh, now what we're going to use is the before pseudo element of our anchor that's what we're going to use uh, and it's that that we're going to uh, give some content and we're going to use an attribute as discussed now this little x here is where we're going to put the type of attribute that we're using now we, we've used the title so what this is basically saying is um, fill the before pseudo element of our anchor with whatever is contained in its title attribute it's as simple as that um, so I'm going to save that that won't have had any effect as yet because of course our tooltip is invisible so I now need to just make sure that the hover state is also targeting this before element uh, this is here so it's the this is now the before element of the hover state of our a element so I save that bring it back in our browser and now once again you can see using the pseudo element instead of an additional markup element uh, we still have a decent tooltip the only problem here is as you've just seen is that browsers tend to have their own styling for titles and they tend to bring in their own tooltips uh, and there's no way of overriding that either I can't style them and I'm pretty powerless to do anything about it so it's a bit of a shame and it kind of messes up the whole point of having <laughs> having our tooltips um, so the solution for that is to use something other than a title attribute now what we're going to use is instead of the title attribute is we're going to use an HTML5 data attribute uh, now these are new attributes that have brought, been brought in with HTML5 spec and what they allow you to do is attach all kinds of personal data and values to any element you like uh, so what we're going to do in this case is add a data element and it, it can be whatever we like as long as it's preceded by data and then a hyphen so in this case we're calling our data element data tip uh, we could add all sorts of other data attributes to these elements as well uh, which you could use for all kinds of things um, so in our case we're just storing the value of our tooltip uh, using the data attribute there like that so the only thing that remains to be done is to make sure that in our CSS uh, we're pointing instead of to our title attribute to our data tip attribute so that's now going to fill our tooltip with the contents of that once again I refresh Chrome and you'll see that those have been brought back uh, perfectly neatly uh, now we can't apply a little pointer unfortunately because you can't have a pseudo element of a pseudo element um, and you'll also notice that in Chrome uh, the animation the transition rather has completely disappeared and uh, we no longer have that nice little fading uh, effect that's a bit of a shame but that's a feature which browsers are going to be supporting uh, in the future uh, for example if we check Firefox 4 uh, actually this is Firefox which Firefox am I using? I'm using Firefox 7 anything but Firefox 4 sorry uh, will actually support these transitions on pseudo elements uh, so that's that's perfectly acceptable uh, and quite nice uh, so that's the end of the quick tip. I hope you've learned something and uh, if there are any questions feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching